Hey, I wanted to uh, do a little update thing for my aquaculture system and uh, just to show how simple it is, see if I can uh, inspire anyone with it. There are two containers here, right? That were that, that are just food grade 200, uh, 250 gallons each. There is a right here a 55 gallon bottle food grade two. There is some piping coming out of them. They both the piping from here to there joins in the middle and dumps in this uh, paint mesh bag that has a uh, jar with a bunch of holes, also food grade jar with a bunch of holes that make sure that things are getting stirred up and there's a lot of aeration. From the inside of the bottom, inside of this bottle there is a pump and the pump sho shoves up a uh, stream of water that divides in a, in a T and then the T goes out and I don't know if you can follow it but it goes all the way around there and all the way around there and it has a hole in the top and the top hole the, the, the hose goes in there and there is another T and the T has two streams of water that are uh, falling on top of the surface here so the surface agitation creating a lot of oxygen for the nitrogen bacteria to be able to live very happily in the um, in, in, in the filter, this is the biological filter. Filter, usually we think about particle filters, but in this case I'm not, I'm not trying to filter particles, I'm trying to filter uh, um, ammonia, uh, organic compounds, you know, like ammonia to nitrate, and then nitrate, 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 whatever, you know, they have different pronunciations. Give me a break, man, I have an accent. So, I can say NH4 to, NH, to NO2 and then NO3. The main thing when you're making a huge uh, canister um, biological filter will be that you need media. And I was like debating about this for a while. They're very expensive little bioballs or whatever, and they're not food grade. Uh, for the most part, I didn't find anything that was BPA free. But then when I was taking my recycling, I was like, damn, I have all this plastic that is BPA free. And it's really not going to be recycled, like 90% of that is not recycled, you know, and China is not taking our recycling, so might as well use it. So I started keeping uh, plastic bottles and um, yogurt things and, you know, whatever is that were BPA free plastics. So the media in this is basically... Just a bunch of cut out plastics that will end up somewhere in the world for how many years, I don't know. But they're very useful here because they provide surface for my nitrogen bacteria to go in there. There are a couple of uh, Gambusia affinis, the uh, mosquito fish in there. A couple of them, you know, two or three. They throw like one little pellet of, um, one little pellet of uh, feed and that's it. I ordered the fish for this container here. It has 50 bluegills. I'm gonna order now the catfish. I just wanted to know if I would be able to get all that shipment alive from Florida. I'm uh, ordering from Live Aquaponics. You guys are good, Live Aquaponics. I ordered the food and everything from them. And in this one, I'm gonna basically just be putting in wild caught bluegill. So eat it later, you know. Feed them up, you know, from all the glyphosate or whatever, you know, they're, they're eating, you know, and just, you know, get them later. But, you know, I'm having a problem. They actually recognize me now and go up there and, like, say hi to me and, I don't know, and I have compassion and empathy too high in my heart. And then I have issues with uh, killing something that I raised myself, you know. So, we'll see how that is, you know. I thought it was going to be easier with fish, but it seems like butchering is not my forte. Um, I'm gonna show you what's in it. Um, what else? Well, this, what is this? This is just a container of 55, 55 gallon bottle, a container of water that gets the water that is rejected from my reverse osmosis system. Uh, the total dissolved solids in this container is about 35 or 40. 
which is better than most tap waters anyway. So even if I was gonna drink this, it would still be great. And it's pretty much what comes out of the tap water anyways. In my, in my reverse osmosis filter, I get water that is basically pure, under five uh, total dissolved solid parts per million. Whatever it is, even if it's arsenic on five parts per million, it's not gonna do shit to me. So that's pretty good water. And instead of dumping this, which usually is connected to your sewer, you know, it's just connected to your discharge, I I just basically grabbed a one quarter uh, irrigation tube and put it all the way here, and I have to keep an eye that it doesn't, it has to have any floods, you know, and then it goes outside, but I keep it here, then I treat it um, with Pond Prime or whatever the hell, you know, that you want to take the chlorine out, and I put it in either these uh, tanks or the pond that is outside. I don't like to water my plants, my uh, garden that I'm gonna eat with mineral, just dead water from the tap. I like it to have the life that the roots are going to enjoy uh, having. There is a lot of, um, there is a lot of research about like how the root system gets uh, a lot better nutrient uh, uptake if there is the correct amount of bacteria just like your intestine system I mean your uh, digestive system I'm sorry um, it is true to everything in this planet that we do interact with bacteria in a symbiotic way and the dirt the earth it is like a digestive system it is like a tummy you know it is like a tummy and a tummy in which like things are born from and also things that get digested from you know and things go come from it and come back to it so it needs to be alive and the way to make water alive is to circulate it with some organic material in it for about 28 days or more than 28 days I usually go like more like a month and a half 28 days is a very important chunk of time we have 13 months during the year not 12 13 there are 12 constellations that we got things from but really it's 13 moons and if you look at where the moon is when you start a tank and you start circulating the water then you know that by the next moon and the same place you should have a completely cycled um, system meaning that fish or any other aquatic uh, creatures would be able to survive without uh, them collapsing to ammonia or you know just gill poisoning or whatever so that happens because of the nitrogen bacteria the same bacteria that needs to be in the uh, soil and the same bacteria that is in the air and it's the same bacteria probably that is in your bread you know and in your tummy so that's where it comes from that's where we are we're all connected through this cycle of life this is a obviously artificial environment but you can bring in those elements to it and uh, I'll show you the fishies right now I don't want to take it more than 10 minutes but that's pretty much what I have going on basically in my uh, garage okay so now I'm gonna show you the guys inside here I don't know if you can see them but there are bigger fish and there are some goldfish they were originally in this tank these are uh, bluegills from Temescal Lake you see them? So yeah, they're, they're pretty cool, they're big, they're ready to be eaten, but they're also pretty cute, they're ready, uh... okay, so this is another look at the filter, the filter has that mesh, uh, the water just falls there into this container that I just tied up with rope, and then I put this uh, cutting board, uh, BPA free cutting board, very thin, just like a thin sheet, so, I don't know if you can see how the water moves, but that is all that I need for bacteria to grow and do its job. So, then it goes down there. This is where the filter goes up and splits, and then you can follow it all the way to where it goes in. And then there is a... Uh, and these are um, the... 50 something uh, bluegills that I got from Live Aquaponics. They're gonna grow, they're gonna be yummy. All right, sorry about getting you a little dizzy right there. But yeah, this is pretty much uh, what I wanted to show. There you go, aquaculture.